So processes, they're the definitions and the four different types of definitions within processes. So design is when you're like coming up with it, right? Configuring the inputs, ways that will enhance quality, value, uh, productivity. That's when you're designing. Okay. Process management is when you actually um, execute it. Um, yeah, that's it. Process control is when you like monitor it to <coughs> see how it can be further improved. So once you've implemented something, then you monitor it um, for efficiency, cost, timeliness, quality, whatever you're trying to do on the crew line. And then the improvement is when you take that information from the control and try and make the process more efficient. Cost, save costs and time to Any questions on process definitions? Okay, so this is, these are the flows of supply chain. Um, what really does product flow? <coughs> Downstream. Information should flow upstream from the customers and money. Upstream. When does product flow upstream? Reverse logistics returns, yep. Any questions on the flows? Information is both ways, but. So that's, I guess I should have said this, it's pretty self-explanatory the information is going to go down. Just make sure that make sure it's going up, that's not the case. For information? Yeah, so information does go both ways. So it's pretty self explanatory that information is going to go downstream, right? If you get someone a product and that information and downstream with the product. Information coming upstream is like your demand or something with a specific product. If customers don't want it, you want that information to come up so you can stop producing it. <clears throat> All right. You guys hear me okay? Yeah, it's all good. All right. Does anyone have questions on chapter one really quick? Yeah.
mostly because it's not like they need to interact with the customer along the way. Whereas something that's more interactive, I'll just say Subway, that's going to be a less efficient supply chain because the customer is involved in the process of making that sandwich. Does that make sense? So if customer is involved, it's going to be slower. If it's interactive, it's slower. If they're not, it should be more efficient. Okay, to show the inadaptability, there is a question on this on the exam. That's where it is. Uh, so basically, just make sure you know what these are. Uh, for basically, just look for those keywords. If the question asks about short-term changes or adjustments to the market, you know what they're talking about. Okay, order qualifiers versus order winners. Um, this is fairly straightforward. Um, I'm going to take the cars. The qualifier, an order qualifier for a car will be having seatbelts. Government regulates that. You have to have seatbelts in your car if you're going to sell to customers and have a few go with people. Order winners might be Tesla having massive screens on their dashboards. That's something that differentiates you from other people and sets you apart. So, is there any confusion on qualifiers versus winners? You essentially can't even enter the market unless you have the order qualifier. Order winners are supposed to get you more customers than other people out there. <laughs> Again, you're welcome to come up and look at these slides with us later. Uh, we won't be posting them. Once it says they're just definitions and stuff, you can go find yourself. Um, but yeah, you're welcome to come up and take a look at it. Yeah? Does our order qualifier does not only apply to the government? <laughs> It can apply to other things as well. So like with cars, like there's no government regulation that's not that cool, but you can definitely set right? So like what level are you doing? Like in order to enter the market with the product, you have to have a All right, uh, keep in mind these supply chain relationships. Um, Latching transactional, I think of like when we set contracts with suppliers to fill this building with paper towels and stuff, it's much more of a transactional relationship with that supplier. We're simply trying to get the low cost. You probably don't care what kind of relationship that is. Um, we're at complementary and then synergistic, uh, meaning quite a bit more. Uh, anyone have good examples of companies employing these kind of relationships? Yeah, maybe because it's creating something that is cool. I would say yeah, McDonald's might be a good example of complementary. Um, they have a super good relationship with their suppliers for potatoes for the french fries. So those are McDonald's, technically their core competency was the burgers. And they got on board with the potato maker and they kind of worked together. So rather than creating something entirely different, those are just two products that go really well together, making a good complementary relationship for them. So my best advice 
quick after this if you have any questions about forecasting or anything there, just go rewatch those three videos. Okay? Know what the three different types of forecasting are. The naive, the simple linear regression, and forecasting of seasonality and trends. With naive, it's just your last period's demand, or last period's yeah, demand is your forecast. Right? So if I sold 10 cars last month, my forecast is like, I'm going to sell 10 minutes. Um, simple linear regression, now that they used to be specific, <laughs> but just comparing the forecast with with the naive forecast would be. Um, simple linear regression is a video on it. It goes into a bunch of math. I don't care which you have or not. If you have, just want to know what it is. Yeah, so the confused statistic is it's comparing. So once, once the simple linear regression comes up with a forecast, it compares it to like the naive forecast would be. So like if I sold 10 cars last month, my simple linear regression said that I would sell like 12 this month, it would be comparing those two numbers. Okay? And then, oh yeah. For naive forecasting, can you explain the difference between the positive and negative values? It's completely unclear. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not sure what I have on my head. Tell me talking after that. Okay, then with seasonality and trends, just know that seasonality isn't just season to the year. It could just be high times or low times. Uh, I know in Korea, LA, with chips, like the biggest time of the year is Super Bowl Sunday. So that's like our high season. Uh, know that you can't make sure to know that you're forecasting. Any questions about forecasting? Like I said, it's not super complex on there, but I'll just go back and watch those videos as a refresher. Yeah, you know why it's in your brain. You have enough listening to know why. Or of your demand, and you just plug that in as your loss in the forecast. Part of the about how like, do you like, sell up and running it? You have your demand for your past 10 periods or whatever, those become your loss. So it's like So I looked up another example of some synergistic relationships. So the example we had listed was a team effort by Panasonic and Tesla to build a new factory that worked on special type of battery. Um, so you're actually working together to make a specific product. Um, another example would be Ford and Volkswagen recently teamed up so that Volkswagen will make basically the electronic base of the vehicle and Ford will put the work parts on top of it. Um, Basically, when you're creating a product together, it would be synergistic. For the test, honestly, just knowing all the words on the screen should be perfect for you. Somebody can work on that. Okay, service design. Um, I'll see if you guys see Dr. Sampson give this lecture. Yeah, he's a kid that loves to do that. Great, that's awesome too. And um, I don't know if you want to. I love that. Anyways, um, basically for the test, uh, I'm going to show you a picture of a key stand diagram in a second. Make sure you know it. Um, know the difference between an enabling innovation and a linking innovation. Um, there are other vocab terms in that lesson. It's good to know all of them. Um, these are the two I picked out. Um, remember, these two is focusing on the customer. So if it's an enabling innovation, you're enabling the customer to do more. So 
Professor Grant and Paul Grant saying that the problem is to design where they want to sell and get to a customer. So let's say you're a pizza company and all you do is make pizzas, but then you start building kits of these trees and you let customers take that home and they take care of that themselves. That would be an enabling innovation because you're moving roles of responsibility over to the customer. So they're now doing a step based on that, which they weren't doing before. They're relieving innovation. Uh, the example from the text was like a car wash that comes and picks up your car from your house and then goes and walks. So that would be relieving, but we're actually taking away the step from the customer of driving to the car wash. They'll now come get it. Does that make sense? Either you're enabling the customer to do more, or you're relieving them from the responsibility and you're taking care of one step. Okay. Quick examples. Um, these kind of resemble some of the test questions. So, for example, like which. Alright, so if you take DiGiorno pizza, right, where it's like frozen, you buy it at the store, what regions of the PCN diagram would be in play? Does that make sense? That's actually a more confusing question. I'm going to review it. Surrogate because you're acting on their pizza, right? The Jordan made that pizza for you. They made the asset. You're now using that, taking it home, and then you're doing things by yourself with that pizza. Does that make sense? That's a more complicated one, I guess. Um, better question might be okay, mod pizza. So if you're face to face with a mod pizza employee and you're telling them what you want while they're making the pizza, what kind of region would that fall under? What interaction is that? The rest, perfect. Face to face with the individual. Face to face with the That's pretty much it. Okay, so we're going to chapter one, chapter two, forecasting, and the search design stuff. Any overall questions? Modules. And then quiz results. 
then quiz results. Quiz results. And then my lab operations. <laughs> and then my lab operations management results. Perfect. That's how you see your quizzes. That doesn't work. Send it to your TA for your section. Great. Do you have a question? No question? 30. 30 questions. Anything else?